Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Fuel shipping accounts for nearly a third of global maritime trade. The capacity of the world's fleet of tankers transporting crude oil, gas, and petroleum products has increased by 83% in the last decades. In today's feature, let us explore some of the most complicated methods of moving fuel through the world's major shipping lanes. Since many energy-dependent locations are situated far from gas reserves, building pipelines would be too costly or impractical. Today, many companies implement a concept of virtual pipeline, enabling users not connected to the grid to utilize natural gas. Through condensation, gas may be cooled to become a liquid, which reduces its volume and makes it easier and safer to store and be shipped overseas. The liquefied natural gas, or LNG, has a cryogenic temperature of minus 162 degrees Celsius and takes up about one six hundredth the volume of natural gas in its gaseous state. This allows efficient transportation by ships. LNG is distributed from its source which can be an import terminal, distribution hub, or liquefaction plant. Cryogenic ISO containers are then placed on a trailer and moved to the regasification station, where LNG is stored and vaporized for use. Once loaded into containers, LNG travels to the port of departure, where containers are further loaded onto a supply vessel with the help of heavy lift cranes. They are carefully fixed into iron brackets to hold them stable during a seaborne voyage. Following the inspection by the ship's crew, it sets sail towards its final destination. Upon arrival at the local port, the containers are unloaded from the vessel and transported to the region's satellite LNG plant to complete the transfer using trailers. LNG is then discharged at the plant and can further be available for use through the local pipeline system. Another way to transport fuel by sea is LNG carriers. With LNG's boiling point being extremely low, Transportation by sea requires advanced technologies, such as tanks made of materials designed to withstand ultra-low temperatures. These are ferronickel, stainless steel, and aluminum alloys with the outer layers covered by thick heat insulation. However, part of the cargo is still affected by the outside temperature and naturally vaporizes during transportation. The boil-off gas can be used as fuel for the vessel. 
LNG carriers are also equipped with emergency shutdown devices to prevent incidents during handling operations, and turbine engines can run on vaporized gas. Due to its hazardous nature, weekly fire drills and other firefighting activities are crucial to the crew on board the vessels. Loading and discharging is performed through pipelines connected to shoreside facilities. Loading ports are equipped to liquefy gas before loading while receiving terminals have facilities to regasify LNG. A rather advanced method of seaborne transportation is the floating transfer terminal. A self-propelled barge shuttles to and from LNG vessels moored at up to 26,000 feet offshore. A hybrid hose handling system that permits a safe and secure connection with the LNG vessel uses the barge as a foundation for transfer. The fuel and boil-off gas are then transferred from the barge to any shore facility using cryoline LNG floating hoses. The technique combines high levels of flexibility, dependability, and extended service lives to fully satisfy the offloading needs of LNG operators and contractors with regard to safety, flow rate, and operational availability. In some cases, LNG can also be transferred from one ship to another in a process called LNG bunkering. In other words, supplying a vessel with fuel for its own consumption. The main benefit of using LNG fuel is the significant reduction in pollution compared to heavy fuel oil, marine diesel, or marine gas oil used to refuel ships. LNG bunkering is both possible at the port and at sea. When it comes to ship-to-ship -ship transfer in the Arctic, the two vessels steam at slow speed prior to connection, with one vessel at anchor and the other vessel approaching by itself or with a tugboat support. The vessel's crew send messenger lines and mooring lines to each other while maintaining constant distance or gradual side-to-side -side approach. The fuel hoses are then connected and the entire operation is supervised from within the vessels. Besides the more environmentally friendly LNG, crude oil is widely used in many parts of the world. In most cases, it is transported through ships called oil tankers. Today, many tankers can be loaded directly from oil fields at sea. To do this, they moor up to a gantry, buoy, or turret. Modern tankers are specifically made to load from a single point mooring at sea at the bow. Through the midship manifold, 
Crude oil can be loaded onto a tanker from a number of offshore facilities or a traditional oil terminal. The oil is transferred to the vessel's piping system via an inline swivel. In readiness for a new connection, the separated buoy will float in an equilibrium posture. Crude oil and petroleum product tankers are the largest ships. Ranging in size from small coastal vessels of 200 feet long, these are able to carry 1,500 to 2,000 deadweight tons to enormous ships of more than 1,300 feet long with up to 550,000 deadweight tons on board. Dead weight is the combined weight of the crew, fuel, lubricating oil, and any other supplies required for the crew's survival. A completely unique method used by only a few countries in the world is air refueling. Air tankers play a vital role in sustaining military operations and support missions in the world's hottest spots. Two aircraft meeting less than 50 feet apart at more than 20,000 feet above the ground, traveling at speeds close to 400 miles per hour, while a tanker replenishes another aircraft with the fuel necessary to continue the mission. The two main refueling systems are Probe and Drogue, which is simpler to adapt to existing aircraft, and the Flying Boom, which offers faster fuel transfer, but requires a dedicated boom operator station. The tanker is the airplane that supplies the fuel, while the receiver is the aircraft that receives the fuel. The two aircraft begin the aerial refueling with pilots inching closer to one another with their aircraft, while still maintaining a gap of approximately 100 feet. The probe operator plugs the probe into the receiving aircraft using the boom type probe. The pilot of the receiver must open the refueling receptacle for the tanker operator to connect the boom. The U.S. Air Force has a few notable flying machines that are designed to perform the refueling task with ease. For instance, the KC-135 Strato tanker, which gives the U.S. Air Force its primary aerial refueling capability, is one such noteworthy aircraft. A dedicated operator sitting at the back of the tanker executes the flying boom technique. He maneuvers a telescope tube into a slot that is close to the receiver plane's front. The aircraft does, however, include a shuttlecock-shaped drogue that may also be used to refuel some types of planes. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
see you next time.